Break. Move the seven the previous meeting. Right. Is there any addition to the practice? Stand all in favor, signify by the hand. Aye. 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 I just want to urge the committee members to uh, support the work changes for item number six in uh, the county ordinance for uh, the discussion. Yeah. 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 No, okay, I, I got two issues. Hopefully, you guys are do something to resolve my water issue out there in the county. Algoma, which is a um, 20 year old Eve. So, um, the other thing is, is um, this word change thing. I mean, you guys had Mary Ann here last week or last month trying to explain what the difference between it's such a minimal thing. I don't even know why you guys are even wasting your time on discussing the change that for what I would understand last. Month was for a driveway that's got to be moved from one road to another for an owner that may or may not sell that property. I mean, unless unless the property is sold and they need that driveway moved for housing, I don't even know why you guys are even discussing it because there's a agricultural driveway there. If if I remember right, what we were talking about, what you guys talked about last month. And sounds like it's not being farmed no more, you know. And if Bob wants to move that driveway, just pull it out of there. You can you pull that out of there, and you guys wouldn't have no access to that farm. So changing this from possible to legally compliant, I mean, it, it sounded like Marianne was even stumped, and it was such a minimal change for the two the two words. I mean. We had spent a half an hour on that. And if you guys vote this and approve it and it goes to the Board of Supervisors, it'd be like that one meeting you guys had when you first um, swore in all the other supervisors. You spent an hour and a half on one word, whether it be A or T. I mean, you guys are going to end up with the same, same issue. So I hope you guys just vote this down and just table it or something because it's only affecting one property where my ditch issues um affecting a number of properties and it's affecting farmers revenue because the water's not flowing it flows everywhere except in the ditch from a, a well that they hit when they put in the sewer you know and Unfortunately, John Hayes just signed that guy a golden ticket saying, hey, no, it's the property is it's, it's approved and do the project and and he signed the ticket saying, yeah, there ain't no issues at all. Nothing has changed, you know. So when that guy proposed that sewer and stuff to us um, homeowners in there, he said nothing was going to change, you know, and was that water running through there? You know, it's going to affect the land, it's affecting erosion around the culverts. It's like when you run um, hot water on a big sheet of ice, how it finds and wears down the ice. Well, that's what it's doing to the underneath of the culvert. And then it's eroding around the culverts, lifting them, shifting them, so the water ain't even flowing properly. So, I hope you guys can find some kind of a maintenance issue to try to help keep down on the weeds and stuff because anybody that wants to sell their house, you know, nobody's going to want to live with, live at a house that's got cattails sometimes six, seven feet high. 
you know, and then you guys come out and maybe cut it once once a year. I mean, well, at least spray it and keep up a little more maintenance on it. You know, I do what I can with my lawnmower to keep it narrow enough so you guys can hopefully just take the boom more and do one swat. But some years, you know, like this year, it's really hanging you know, up pressure. I mean, just come out there and look at it on all the fire hydrants. You guys can see the water coming up right along the side of the pipe of the fire hydrant and eroding the, the land and the soil. And an easy fix would be throw tile in there. And then you guys say, well, we don't know if tile's going to work. Well, come on, look at that drainage kit. You know, now it don't pay to look at it because we got it all runoff. There's going to be water in that drainage. But once the spring is done, there'll be water in my ditch and then nothing in that drainage ditch. And, you know, you, you guys come out last year, Bobby come out last year, snapped a couple pictures. It was dry for two weeks, but it wasn't dry down on my end. And, and unfortunately, I'm on the wrong end. I'm on the bottom of this problem. So please, when they discuss this, if you've got any questions, you guys want to come out, meet with me, let me show you what's going on. I'm more than happy to do that. So, thanks for the time. Anybody else have anything to say? Number four, presentation by Hank Hanna, there is associates on the highway feed we construct that. You don't have to go through all of it right away, but I figure you might have have a pause. All right. Um, so the this first sheet is pretty much an overview of the project. We'll be going through it and we're looking at the reconstruction, as you know, from um, approximately midway or AB over to stage one Highway 47, coming around the corner. Um, the blue area that you see coming down your line here, that would be the, the um, potentially easement area or the closed easement area for getting the, uh, the drainage pipe from the roadway down to the DOT detention pond. Um, so we'd be working with a few different uh, uh, property owners, Primarily, Myron is the largest of the ones, but we would be going through approximately four different properties to get the, um, the drainage down to that area. How big is that pipe? The pipe will, the, um, the last section of the pipe will end up being 60 inch. So the, the run going down to the um, down to the pond would be a 60 inch pipe. It's enough so that the uh, drainage area to the um, to the north for Fox Crossing, um, since they're one of the partners in this, it will end up going through and uh, provide enough capacity so that when they go through, if they do some additional hitching or do some repair or update to uh, an urban roadway, that they'd be able to go through and um, capture that water and not have it be a um, a problem. So that actually, that uh, pipe actually goes through and captures from about like midway through the curve here to 47. That would all come down this way. The section down, so pretty much you would capture the stuff along valley. The stuff that's along uh, Racine, that actually would come down and connect into an existing, um, the existing storm sewer that's along uh, P a little bit further. Uh, salt that was put in uh, prior. And then um, there'll be a small storm system that's connected up where we're proposing a cul-de-sac where we're going through and realigning Beck Street. 
that would end up going off and pretty much follow the existing location of how the water is flowing right now in that area up into the Fox River. So the, the Racine Street would go to the Fox River? The Racine Street would go to the Fox River as well. Um, we've gone through, we've, uh, we've looked at, um, looking at the total suspended solids and the amount that we're capturing and collecting from the Valley Road and taking to the detention pond would be enough to meet the requirements for the total suspended solids for the project. So we're not putting, we'd be meeting the DNR requirements um, for that. Um, the next, the next couple pages that I have here for you are just uh, different typical sections. They'll be uh, running through there, more of a graphic view. Um, the main, the main part of most of the roadway will end up going through. It will have sidewalk on each side. We'll have a four foot terrace, um, curb and gutter, four foot bike lanes, 12 foot driving lanes, and then a 14, two -way, 14 foot two way left turn lane. Um, that will end up requiring um, a little bit of right away on each side, and then we'll also end up having easements uh, just for during construction. Um, the part of the reason why we went with four foot, as far as the, the terrace, is we're trying to keep things in tight. We would like to go further, but we'd end up going through and causing a lot of problems with a lot of the driveways that are out there or parking lots, I should say. Uh, so we're going through keeping it four foot. We didn't go narrower, a couple of reasons. One, we'd like to make it as wide as we possibly can so that we have, can uh, have more room for snow storage and other maintenance issues. The other reason though is there's lighting along the roadway and with the lighting along, along the roadway, we need at least that four foot so that we can go through and put the light standards in there and have be safe because you want a minimum from the back curb to where the base is to be, um, to be two feet, the base is about a foot and a half. So we could probably get away with just under three and a half or around three and a half, but it's just easier to go and make it a um, straight four foot. It actually will, not just easier, I should say, it's it's more consistent, gives a better look and feel for the area. Um, we do have a couple areas where that's changed. When you're uh, when we're going by the cemetery, look at the one immediately underneath that. At the cemetery, we are attaching the sidewalk to the back of to the back of Curb Gutter because we want to go through and avoid impact in the cemetery. We don't want to end up having to get any. Uh, um, we don't want. There's a couple things from the cemetery that are actually on the existing right of way and that we're trying to avoid because some of the walls and stuff like that are on the existing right of way. But the other part of it is we don't we want to minimize any. Um, Temporary easements or other impacts that we have on cemetery property. And then the last one on the back side, um, this is on the, the far east end of the project, basically from about the, the park on down. There's additional right of way there, with the exception of that park. Um, there we went through and we made it a five foot terrace instead of the four foot terrace, is really about the only difference. With the additional uh, room, we ended up uh, going through and going with the side foot terrace. The other reason why we have the side foot terrace in front of the park, even though uh, we still end up having some, uh, we end up having to go part way onto the park property for doing that. We talked with the park director and the park, the director for uh, parks for the village of Fox uh, Crossing actually wants us to put it there. They, they would rather have it um, be a, have that additional little bit of separation for the park holders. So they were fine with having the, it on to their property. Um, the next couple with the typical sections here, these are more just showing you the, the, the pavement structure. I mean, they're showing you the full, what we're doing here, but more engineering format. But if you look underneath, it's showing you uh, the different pavement depths. So we are going to end up going through and we'll have a concrete roadway out here instead of the asphalt that's there now. 
So hold up better, last longer for the type of traffic that's out there. Um, we'll also go through and um, you'll have nine inches of concrete with six inches of base course. The soils out there are not the greatest. Um, there's a lot of uh, frost susceptible soils. So with that, it's recommended to go through and put um, a slug crush material or a breaker run type of material to go through and uh, basically stabilize the base and not make it so that you're going to have a lot less likelihood of having frost teeth and problems down the road. So that pretty, that's taking through most of the, the different sections. The next section that we have here is um, the traffic control. The reason why I want wanted to bring the traffic control is uh, twofold. One, we're going through, and to do this, we will be uh, cutting significantly, cutting the existing roads significantly in areas. There's some areas where it's going to be cut down probably about two and a half to three feet so that it matches into the existing uh, area. Because when they went through and they built the roadway originally, they went through, they dug out the ditches and they put the material up on top of the roadway and you raise the roadway and it's higher than the surrounding area. Now we're going to and we're adding a uh, curb and gutter that will drop it down a, a half inch or a half a slug, excuse me. So when they, we go through, we have to not only drop it down to for that, uh, that curb and gutter, but we also need to drop it down to go through and get rid of all the extra uh, additional material that was put on the top of the roadway. So this here will set us up so that we have minimal impacts to the surrounding properties and we match into people's uh, driveways and parking lots and the lawns and stuff like that. Not that there's a whole lot of lawns out there, but um, as pretty much as well as we possibly can. So you can kind of see that what we're proposing, because it's going to be quite a bit of a grade change, is to turn it into a one lane roadway uh, during construction. We start off the very first phase, we put out, out uh, under flagging operations, we put some uh, some temporary widening out there. It won't be a lot because we don't have a room, room for a lot, but we because the existing shoulder is only about a couple feet wide, so we go through and pave that existing gravel shoulder so that the uh, vehicles can run over a little bit wider or run over and be pushed over a little bit. The second phase, what we do is the, the eastbound lanes would stay open or the northbound and eastbound lanes would stay open. The um, westbound and the southbound lanes would be closed. So it's gonna be one way traffic. We'd end up going through and setting up a detour. So that would be a big loop. So the traffic would be able to go through and they drive up P onto 47, the AB and they'd have a loop. So they can have access to all the properties at all times, but we're not going to be able to go through and have bi-directional traffic during construction. Uh, we've done this multiple times in other uh, cities and other communities where it's tighter um, confines so that we can go through and build the roads. We've done it, did it up in Ashwaubenon on Cormier Road and several others. Works out actually quite well. Also helps expedite uh, the construction for the contractor so that um, helps to keep uh, prices down. We tried to go through and build this under construction. I just don't think it would happen. Uh, without going through and shutting it down to a single lane, I don't think it would happen. Um, then the third phase, what would happen would be just the exact opposite. We'd end up going through the new lanes that we built for the westbound and southbound. We'd put traffic flow around to those. Then we'd go through and we'd build the, the two way left turn lane and the uh, um, eastbound lanes. The very final, uh, yeah, the, we built those and that would pretty much open everything up so that when everything's complete, we just open the project up. What's your time frame for construction for getting to start? <laughs> um, I'm anticipating that this is going to take the entire summer. There, uh, there's a lot of work out here. Um, and from talking with the, the village and stuff like that, they're planning on doing some uh, sanitary sewer 
work in advance. So they're going to be going out here before actually and starting their work. But between the storm sewer and then uh, going through and doing all the work that's out here, yeah, it's going to take pretty much start up in May and finish up the end of October. It's going to be a full summer. So full, the neighbors full have summer. a chance to review this? We've gone through and we've talked. We've had uh, one public involvement meeting so far with the public. Uh, we did that last year and they saw what we had here. Um, we get to, it wasn't quite to this level. We didn't have this much detail. Um, we're having another one planned for uh, in the next probably a uh, month or two. We're right now we're at the point where we're going to be turning in 60% plans to the DOT, to the county, the city of Menasha, and uh, Foxy Crossing for them to review. And then I'd say probably end of April, mid. By mid May, we'll probably end up having um, our second public involvement meeting with the public. We have been in touch with uh, several local pro property owners in the meantime. Um, we've also gone through and had other mailings that have gone out. When we've had changes from uh, the when we from what we presented inside the first public involvement meeting to the public, so that uh, at least to the property owners, so that they could go through and take a look and see what was out there and what we're proposing to do. I've been in discussions with uh, the property owner that owns the uh, the duplexes up by the uh, where we're changing Beck Street and Valley, the little section of Valley and turning that into a cul de sac. So we've been in regular communication with uh, the public. Obviously there's some that are for, some that are against. A lot of them want this. The one, uh, Concern that we hear the most is them talking about there was uh, some property owners that are on the south side of the road asking whether or not we needed to go through and have sidewalk on both sides instead of just on one side. The way that your funding is set up, you do have to have fun, uh, sidewalk on both sides. The DOT and the MPO are going to require that without you going back and asking them to uh, change it. The DOT can't change it, it would have to be the MPO that gives you. Uh, Okay, to go through and remove the sidewalk from the outside. But we also went through and discussed whether or not it's really worth it because most of the time when we go through and we do remove the sidewalk from one side, people come back and they say, Well, why didn't you put it on the other side? And then you're coming back a couple years later, it's going to cost you more money and be more uh, a, a new construction season to come out and add something back in that we could have added in for a fraction of the price to begin with. It doesn't look like there'd be much traffic, foot traffic, but actually there is. Yes. I don't know why. Well, well did you talk to the recycling plant and the blamers? Because they they have a lot of traffic. We have they've been invited to all the uh, public involvement meetings. I haven't really heard from them. We have been in direct con contact with Myron though. Um we have a lot of the uh actually some of the People, residents, and Fox Crossing that are to the north actually wanted more uh, access, more sidewalks. Um, and we're looking for additional areas for them to walk. They said that they have a lot of people that are trying to walk along here now. Um, and we did have some business owners. Uh, the main one that was against it, and truthfully, there's only one that was truly against it, and that was the person that owns the storage facility. Is the only person that actually spoke against having sidewalk on the south side and his concern was that he's says that he's already paying uh for snow removal for sidewalk at another one of his facilities and he's going to have to do it for this one i have a question and it was a question on a previous um supervisor also in this ditchway that you're going to have here, are you going to have it so it folds off on the end so it gets down? The one, the one, yeah, the one that we're what we're putting in isn't a ditchway. It's going to actually be a 60-inch culvert that's coming in. Well, okay, culvert. So, yeah, yes. So yeah, with it being culvert, it will be closed off. Everything's going to be everything's going down into the DOT, um, into directly uh, discharging into the DOT. Um, Detention one, thank you, and that's fenced off. 
I know that was a big concern of the whole board at one time. Yeah. Not just this one, but a different one. The thing I heard you say, and not just about this, when you guys are doing these road railways, are you mainly doing cement now? Or are you doing flat tops? Uh, actually, it depends upon the road. So, okay. it, it, really, it really depends. It, it changes from roadway to roadway. We do we do some, we lay some out uh, asphalt, we lay some of them out to concrete. We actually do what's called the life cycle cost analysis when we're going through and putting these together. And the life cycle cost analysis looks at the initial cost of concrete versus asphalt, but it also looks at the long-term cost of concrete versus asphalt. We go through and look at what the maintenance is uh, going to be on both of them and the longevity of the actual product and how soon you're going to end up having to go through and uh, replace. So because there's a lot of truck traffic out here, concrete is the better route. Usually when you have a lot of truck traffic, you want concrete because uh, truck traffic is what feeds it up. So between Lamers and Myron and the other industrial uses out there, the truck traffic actually is what's dictating what we're uh, going with, not so much anything else. We actually went out and took additional uh, counts because we were getting the stuff from the MPO, and the MPO gave us traffic counts, but they didn't give us the breakdown of uh, truck traffic versus cars. And if we wouldn't use the statewide average, you're probably talking about like 6% trucks. This road, when we went through and actually measured it, during a regular weekday, nothing special. We came up with closer to 15% trucks. So that's what's driving it to be concrete versus asphalt. Thank you. Now, the last thing is the part that you definitely don't want to hear, and unfortunately, I actually the bearer of bad news, and that's the price. Um, this project has gone up quite a bit in price. It's not because it's been it's not because the scope of the project has changed. It's because prices have gone up that much. The DOT is facing it. Pretty much the entire industry has been facing it. This one was going to be done, was originally uh, scoped at somewhere around um, pre COVID, somewhere in the upper six million, close to $7 million. We're now sitting closer to about like $9.2 million for the for the price of this thing. So it, with the different shares and stuff like that, I can't get into, I don't really know all the bits on that, but I did wanna go through and make you aware that material costs and everything is going up. The, the storm sewer itself has gone up about half a million dollars. It was around uh, 2 million, now it's about 2.6 million. Part of that is also due because of changes in the industry. One of the big uh, concrete pipe manufacturers went through and bought out their competition. All of a sudden, a couple months later, their prices have gone down. So um, it's things that are outside of our control. Like I said, it hasn't been because we've increased scope, it's because just in general, industry prices are going up. When was, I mean, 16.7, what was that estimate? Oh, well, uh, probably 2017, 2018. And 9.2 is now, but we've still got a couple months before we're going to go up more. Well, that's the thing is this is actually, this won't, this won't be built until 2025. So we don't know what price is for it. Why? Yeah. We don't know what prices will be. I mean, it's. Depends on how long by the bucks. But, but yeah, it, this was, this was originally, the original scoping of this project um, was done back when uh, the previous highway commissioner was here. So that gives you an idea of how long ago this was set up at the time. It made sense. And then also at the time, construction prices were going up two, maybe three percent a year. We're looking at 10 to 15 percent a year is what they've been for a couple of years. Now they're starting to stabilize a little bit, but we don't know. 
Is that nine million projection for 2025? That's to, the DOT requires us to go through and do it in today's dollars. What the board we approved the project, right? Correct. What? How much do we fall back that over seventy? Yeah, seven million. But we only have the design in for that, so. Or what? Have a cost overrun? But I don't know if you call it an overrun. I mean, it's, yeah, this is inflation. Um, I mean, one thing we did, one thing was, is the scope of this project, I mean, the largest thing was flooding issues. So, you know, we went over options. We've looked at cutting the project almost in yes. half. So when you look at that cutting in half, yeah, we can say that up front. But now you look at cutting this project. I mean, this is a big project. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people going after this one. But if we cut it in size, Potentially, that second half could actually, because it's such a short project, your prices could get higher um, with that. Uh, we looked at asphalt versus concrete. And right now, asphalt prices are at, are almost comparable to, they're, they're very high right now. It's like with the price of trucks. We have to realize that the price is going up. Right. I mean, we looked at uh, removing sidewalk. Yep, and if we remove the sidewalk from the one side, you'd save like one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. And if you look at this, I mean, if you look out on forty seven, I mean, you've got sidewalk. I mean, you're right on right on the tip of the city of Appleton there too. You've got sidewalk along that whole corridor there, along P. That new construction has sidewalk to not put it in. I used to drive that road. Almost every day, and you'd be surprised at how many people are gone. Then the the public information oh, meeting, know. we've had some discussion in there about the sidewalk to nowhere. Right. Um. You know, when you start looking, I mean, at that end of P, um, that section. I mean, there's a lot of development starting down there, but uh, but the Menasha Stadium down there, um, your close proximity of Shopping and retail out on 47. I mean, to remove that, it doesn't make sense. And then for a couple hundred thousand, it's not going to really, uh, you know, cut into this. So I mean, that was, we've looked at, I don't know, every option. Yeah, we've, we've been going through and trying to come up with different ways that we can go through and reduce the cost. It's, it really comes down to, what are you willing to give up or what are you willing to just push down and have to push down the road and have to spend even more later on? Well, it, it makes sense what you're saying. I mean, it's the concept of crazy me. When you look at this 17, which is a good idea, but go to the sidewalk, everybody complains like they should have shut down. It seems like every project, but when it's done, it looks great. But when you're looking at 17, this is 7 million. When it's going to be built, it's going to be twice that. Well, I'm just, you know, pretty close yeah, to that. No. I mean, it's 90, another three to it, it's pretty close. So, any project, is this typical or is this yes. always every, no, every seven this is, this is, this isn't typical. This is typical for the last couple of years. Okay, when, he, when they went through and they made the, um, when they went through and they scoped this, you couldn't have foreseen this. You, it might have gone up, but it would have gone up maybe to 7.5 million. Not to nine point two. It's a it's a combination of a couple things. One, there's at least to talk to the or to listen to the contractors. They'll say that there's some supply issues and supply chain problems. They'll also tell you that they're having issues getting people. Another thing is that there's more more work out right now than ever. So the contractors are not fitting things as tightly as they once did because. If they don't get that one, it's not a problem. They got this one over here to keep the guys busy. Um, the build project put a lot of work out onto the street all at once. So why wasn't this done during COVID time? Isn't that you had to wear a mask? On your one yeah. Well, it's more a matter of the funding. The funding for the DOT 
project like this actually does take several years to go through the entire process because between the environmental um, and the environmental isn't just we're going through and looking at the butterflies and stuff like that. It's going through environmental justice. It's going through hazmat, which we're actually still working on some of the hazmat because there's a lot of industrial out here and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of that type of stuff that um, that we're going through and working our way through. The other thing is the real estate is going to take several. It's going to probably take a year to a year and a half to acquire all the the uh, properties that are need to because it's not going to be a lot from any one, but it's going to be a lot, a little from a lot of uh, parcels. There's about 95 parcels out here, so it's there's going to be a little bit from a lot of people. So like what have they been working on while anything you else? Can't, because you can't go through and start that until after we get past what they call the design study report. So that means you have to have your environmental completely done. You have to have your 60% completely done. And you have to have your uh, the design study report done before they can actually start any kind of right-of-way acquisitions by federal law. You're saying the design report is not completely done yet? It will be done. We're actually going to be submitting it uh, in probably about the next week or two. It's just a matter of it does take. The other part is just we also set our schedule partially by the fun, uh, funding. The funding isn't the federal funds aren't available and aren't set until the until 2025. They're actually set for this to be constructed in 2025. That's the way it was always set. What is the funding breakdown on this? I'll say funding. Um, so we're doing a cost share with uh, Village Fox Crossing, City of Menasha, and the Bay County. No federal funding, no state funding. So the STP Urban. Um, yeah, I'll touch on that. Yeah, so there's STP Urban funding in here. For that, um, got about like a, like 5.1 million, which would have been an 80-20 split originally. It's not an 80-20 split now, obviously, with things going up. The the different thing about this is that with it being STP urban versus regular STP, like if it was a bridge or S or a rural roadway, you'd go back to the DOT to ask for additional funds. And a lot of times they would go through and depending upon how things are, and if they agree with the reasoning, you'd end up getting the additional fund. Here, you're not going back to the DOT. You have to go back to the MPO. The MPO is the one that goes through and approves the projects. So um, we've been talking, we've been setting things up, and the county and the communities will need to go and talk to the MPO and see if the MPO will grant additional funds. It's a lot harder to the MPO, though, than it is through the DOT. I will tell you that. So I and, think any, and any changes that you want to the overall scope, well, if you wanted to shorten the project, if you wanted to take out the sidewalk, if you wanted to do, if you wanted to take Somebody even mentioned taking out the two-way left turn lane, which I think is not a good idea. Any of those things, any of those changes would have to go through the MPO and they'd have to approve it because um, other, is that was what was in the original agreement to go through and do this work. So nine million is our cost, no. not the total. No, that's the total cost. Okay. okay, so what's our cost, county cost? I don't know what the full split is between. I can tell you that uh, right now, right now, yeah, there's four million, a little over four million that would be split between the county, the city, and the village. What that split is, I don't know. I don't have the. Okay, so nine million is not going to be our cost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's the total million. total project <laughs> cost. Right. So we're not going to be bearing that whole cost. So there you go. We really don't have a definitive cost. But you will have to go back to the county. Yeah. It's not more than that's double. Whatever our share is going to be. You said 80, 20, but that's not enough that anymore. It, it won't stay 20 because it's capped at a certain dollar value. So you'd have to go back to the MPO and see if the MPO will allow, will give you more because of the Price is going up. The, the problem with the MPO is the MPO goes through and looks at it. They get a certain amount. It comes from the feds. It goes. This, 
it comes from the feds, goes to the DOT, and then the DOT breaks it up and gives it to each of the different MPOs. Each of the MPOs then looks at it as like, okay, well, if I go through and I give you more, I have to take away from somebody over here. So that's where it gets to be a little bit trickier getting additional funding from the MPO. Where does it go then? Back to the county? And well, place? hopefully, so I, I'm trying to set up a meeting right now. So the one thing is, is a project like this is lucrative because you've got the county, the village of Fox Crossy, and the city of Menasha. So chances are that's why we were chosen. Right, because you're going through and you're hitting three communities instead of one. This isn't going through and saying, well, we're just giving the county the money or just the city of Menasha. It's something that they're looking at. It's a more area-wide improvement than just going through and giving it to one. So it'd be a little easier maybe the three or right. one. Man. So if we set up, I mean, our, the first thing is to say, let's go back to the MPO and find out if there's any option with this. I mean, like like Andy said, it's just that switching some money around, somebody might not get some project, you know, we might not get some funding on a future project and put it toward this. But the next step is to go to MPO and find out exactly what we can do. So that's the next step that we're looking at. The other question I had was, in two years, this area here, what happens when the property changes hands or something sells out or something closes? Do you have to negotiate again or is that no. obligated to that? No, what it what happens once once they go through and they uh, purchase it's it's done. So and what we do is we go through and we've got we've had title searches done already once. We'll get updates and actually we're in the process of getting updates right now because they'll go through and they're gonna be uh you want your title searches to be within six months, no older than six months uh, from when you go through and you start your uh your negotiations and stuff like that. Once we start the negotiations and we do the purchase, they're re uh, required to go through if they're selling their home or selling their business or something like that to notify whoever's buying that, hey, they're looking at buying something from us. Or if we're already done with the sell, it will show up actually on their um, their deed. Or, so um, no, you won't have to, yeah, you won't have to worry about that. A couple other things too with that is, is that the DOT's detention pond that was out there, um, how many years ago was it? Well, when they constructed that, it was uh, oversized for this project, essentially right. for this project. So the DOT did work with uh, municipalities to over, overdig this. Um, you know, so and on one hand, it's a really good deal for the county. And locals, because otherwise we would have been trying to figure this out. Right, and actually, in a tight area like this, it would have been very difficult because there really isn't any land where we could go through and say, "Hey, we're going to put a pond here." At least not the size that we would need for the amount of water. With the DOT doing this, like uh, Bob said, and I do know that it it did it work out to be advantageous. Also. The communities had already had some conversations with Myron about where to uh, to run the pipe. So Myron was aware of it and is expecting us coming through and running uh, through their uh, property. Um, and it was actually a deal that Fox Crossing, I know that they were, they went through and they had some land that the DOT wanted for a pond. And they said, you can have that property if you dig this deeper for us. So when you look at that, if we wouldn't have had this option, we're probably looking at purchasing land. You'd be looking at a lot more. Potentially digging this on our own costs that we save. So there is some, you know, trade-offs that this is already done with this project. To look at the brighter side, I guess, with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me. I mean, conversations yeah. Annie and I have. I mean, we've been talking about this for a little while now, yeah. just trying to figure out is there is there a way that we can go through and reduce the pain? What can we do? How can is there other funding that we can go after or look at to try and so we're looking at all these different options, trying to make it so that it 
it's not as big of a hit for the county and the communities. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Presentation by Andy Murphy of the Land Water Conservation Department. Tell us what I have to report to us. Okay, good morning, everybody. Hey, how are you? My name is Andy Murphy. I'm a GIS specialist over at Land Water Conservation Department, and I also help manage our uh, municipal separate storm sewer system permit. Um, first up, I'm going to ask. Did you happen to already get a copy of this? And or if not, I can make some copies or I can pass this one on. I apologize, I didn't bring extra copies. I, I can go over it with you. Uh, this is part of the uh, requirement that the, the DNR uh, wants us to annual report. Uh, everything that we're doing as part of the MS4. And part of this is to present our draft report to, to you folks uh, before we submit it. Uh, the, the permit itself and the report involves uh, basically eight topic areas. And uh, two of them are public education and outreach and uh, public involvement. Another one is uh, illicit discharge and detection and elimination, uh, which is something that we handle uh, over at Land and Water. We basically go out and inspect uh, the outfalls to see if, uh, particularly in industrial areas, if anybody's dumping anything. So we look for any kind of illicit discharges there. Um, we uh, have a storm uh, water. Uh, management plan, uh, and that basically uh, looks at everything that we do within the county to reduce uh, solids and pollutant load in the system. Um, and that includes everything from everything that the highway department does here on this facility, keeping their grounds nice and neat, keeping the yard well kept, uh, making sure things don't get uh, uh, you know, surface water doesn't get contaminated from anything running off. Uh, it also includes the park system. Uh, so we work with Winnebago County Parks. Uh, you know, we, we look at if they're applying fertilizer, uh, if they're doing it within the, the right rates, and they have to record all of that. Um, there is also uh, two big components with uh, erosion control. Uh, we work with the planning and zoning department, and they uh, are responsible for making erosion control inspections on all of the projects throughout the county. So those uh, numbers are, are reported and reported to the DNR in there. Um, the other component that highway is responsible for uh, is reporting on street sweeping. So, they record everything that they collect on the MS4 roadways, which is in the, the uh, urbanized area. And we report how much street sweepings they've collected. They also are required to uh, report how much uh, salt or brine that they're putting on the roads during the season. That's reported in there. So the highway department is, is busy collecting all of this information and they provide it to me, I put it in the report and the DNR then reviews it. Uh, so th these are all parts of the, the report that we are required to, to uh, submit to the DNR. Uh, we've got this, what, what you're looking at there is really the, not the meat of the report. The meat of the report is uh, all of the attachments that we include. So we, we are uh, including uh, all of the inspection reports from erosion control, 
We're including all of the, the sweeping logs, all of the salt uh, reporting. We're including uh, essentially this blue binder, which is the entire program, which includes everything that we do uh, to manage the stormwater uh, system. Is that one year? Uh, this is the teacher's copy. Yeah, this is mine. But uh, Bob's got a copy. Uh, every department, yes. Is that for one year's worth? Oh, uh, well, it's it's basically a few years. Now, this, this particular one was updated in 2019, okay? I'm going to go through and update this again uh, this year because we, we have more more work involved. But yeah, it gets it gets a little bit sick. We have um, also in here uh, last the last stormwater mod. So this is going to be and this is a different topic. This is going to be updated in 2024. I'll be coming before you to introduce this uh, information as well uh, because this is uh, some work that we're going to be doing in the future, which is part of uh, understanding the uh, actual TMPL, total maximum daily load pollutant, and the, the TSS, the solids that are entering into the system. So that, that's part of it. Um, so yeah, every department has this. It's basically the work plan and the procedures that we have to follow uh, to manage the, the system. Does anybody have any question, other questions right now? Okay. Um, one of the other things that we do, uh, we partner with the Northeast uh, Stormwater Consortium, uh, NUSC, Northeast Wisconsin Stormwater Consortium, and they're a really good partner. Uh, we pay a fee to belong to that organization. Um, they do a large portion of the public education and outreach. Uh, so they'll go over to the schools, they work with the community. Uh, many events, you, you folks may have heard of the uh, Foxwold Watershed Cleanup. Really big event, it's gotten really popular. Uh, so that's another kind of a public event that we go out and get everybody in the community and get involved, teach them a little bit about runoffs, and uh, pick up a lot of trash in the process. So they're a really good partner. Uh, we have uh, our quarterly meetings with uh, department heads and staff where we basically review what we're doing uh, as departments and as a whole. Uh, that group has been working together now for several years, probably six years now. It's been a really effective way to communicate. Uh, we find that. Uh, getting together on a quarterly basis allows us to share a lot of information and uh, keep everybody up to speed with, with what's happening. We expect uh, the DNR to be coming out with a, a new permit uh, in 2024, and uh, we're not entirely sure what's going to be in it, but we think that we've been working really closely with, with them. So we, we expect to remain in compliance with uh, everything that they were asked. Anybody has any other questions? Andy, you might want to mention the reduction rates that were required to achieve all that stuff. Yeah, sure. You bet. Um, so yeah, the DNR, uh, part of the reduction requirements for uh, your total maximum daily load, uh, they're increasing dramatically from 40% to 83%, which is going to be a very difficult uh, goal for most municipalities and communities to achieve, uh, at least in the short term. Uh, we here in Winnebago County, uh, because we're talking primarily with uh, a county roadway system of about 35 miles, we're in fairly good shape to potentially meet those. One of the ways that we, we do that is by working with 
Bob, and as they're looking at projects like this to see what we can do, and especially like this partnering that uh, the uh, engineer was just speaking about, it gives us a good way to work with other communities and municipalities to work towards that 80% goal. So these are really good projects from a, a permit standpoint because we'll use any of those improvements to uh, meet our numbers. Many communities are looking at 20 to 40 years out in order to try and get to that 80% part. Um, so it's, it's a long range plan. Uh, basically, I look at our capital improvements plan and look at our future programming. And then I'll talk with Bob about, uh, you know, where do we think we might have some potential uh, work that would help us to, to improve our, our numbers on the MS4. And uh, that system seems to have been working uh, pretty effectively. The, uh, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll be coming back before this committee to uh, introduce in a little more detail the uh, upcoming study that we're uh, gonna update our model so I can get a little bit more in depth in that where we talk specifically about getting to those reduction numbers that Mr. Fari asked about. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be for that. Well, uh, we have basically there isn't a time frame. What the DNR did was they kind of gave you an option, kind of like a, a menu. You could choose A, B, or C. And uh, the option of uh, either being you know compliant or working towards compliant, or, you know, we're never gonna get there. Uh, we are looking at a, a, a B option where we uh, are looking at a long range plan. Our initial, when we ran this first model, uh, which was a 40% reduction, we were close to attaining that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the numbers are gonna look like. I, I'm confident we're not gonna be anywhere near 80%, but we're gonna start having to look at a you know a 20 year horizon or or longer to uh and, and I think that the DNR is uh well they're gonna have to be satisfied with that. Yes, we are working towards that goal. And that's what most communities are. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks. We can get to that. Special action, Miller, then. One of the Bigel County's full exception, seven point fourteen zero eight eight to replace the possible with legally required. I move to approve first to amend the Bigel County General Board section seven point one four. Second. Um, in, in line 24, I changed the words from uh, should to shall. That's the only change over what you saw. We have can. Can. C A N. No, no. Uh, further on, where it says uh, the driveway. The, the okay. Part. All right. Thank you. Thank 
Everything else was exactly the same as you saw last. One question: Did anything come up with the last time we talked? Did you notice we were talking to different people? Or no, everything's the same, right? Yep, everything's pretty much the same. Did they do bother you too much different view in the box? No, like I said, I mean, this is the first time of doing this that this ever has ever been an issue. I said my only concern is is that how, like in the future, how how is our department determines on a tower roll, what is it to comply with? I don't know. Can discuss that or how that how we're going to turn how our department's going to determine that. Well, every town has ordinances. I mean, you know, and and you can always call. Um, you know, the town clerk will be able to tell you whether that driveway is is compliant on their road. Phone call can, can determine that. I agree with this wholeheartedly and the of the town, but I don't know that it's the highway department that they're going to have to go ahead and call all the town to figure out compliant. You know, uh, it, and it would be able to have to go ahead and say our town that you have to submit all the I don't call yeah. the thing. But they have sure. to be right from the town also. You know, yeah. the and it can be up to the landowner to, be, to decide who he's got to contact. You know, this says if, you, if it's possible to put it on the town road, the landowner's got to go there first. It's all been said. Well, as I said before, I mean, this is legal, but there are random patients to it. Um, but the word change, changing the word from uh, should to shall, I would say it's a very good idea because shall is or, or should is ambiguous. I mean, say must. Um, but again, there's no doubt that this is going to make the commissioner's job, I think, for this, because you're going to have each town that orders any county road will have a separate town where it's supervisor in order. Um, so again, I think, yes, it's legal, but there are ramifications. Uh, is there anything else you can think of? Um, no, I mean, I agree. I mean, the, 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 the driveway access is, is a hard enough process. And, you know, then I think this just adds one more. I mean, I think if, if you're going to go this route, I think you need to look at the whole policy yourself. I mean, the, why do we have an access policy for, to make our roads safe? So, you know, taking a road or an access from a town road and putting it on a busier county road. I think that's your big picture. I mean, there's more to it. I mean, there's site stopping distances um, with this. I mean, whether it's a ag access or I mean, just like the town. I mean, if it's a, a, a ag access, different from a residential, right? So I mean, that's where we look at. I mean, same thing as if it's a a gas station uh, being put on a road or a, a residence or a multi-family. It's the same thing. I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into things. It's, uh, you know, so. Okay. Who said me? No, I was on. Uh, God damn it. Sorry. Number seven discussion. Only from Iowa East Range. 
um, the situation out there, I mean, um, you know, we, we agreed that we were going to mow, uh, spray out there. Um, we, tr we did spray last year. I think it was effective in that area. We did spray last year. Yes, yeah, remember? Well, we did ditch and we sprayed it. No, there was enough cactus on the piece of stuff that you weren't going to spray it because there's only a few sprouts coming out. The year before you sprayed, which did a very good job at the end of the season. Okay, right? well, okay, right. My, yep. So, so we have a test where that's to control the cattails, right? That's the issue. Yeah, right? control okay. the cattails. Right. So, right. That's we spray that one, whatever is emerging there at that time. Um, but one thing is, we, we need to be selective what we're spraying out there, too. We don't want to, you know, yeah, you're anything, careful. everything out there. So, I mean, that's one thing. Um, so much wrong, though. Yeah, we've got a. It, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a specific for that uh, Water. for that application. Yeah. So yeah. So. I don't know if you've all been by there, and I go by there just about every day. Every day I go to the Oshkosh, that way. There's waters. I don't care what it's dry out or whatever it is. I have to agree. I know where he has to live, but the farmers there. I'm going to say the farmers because I know it better. I really get hurt. It's just eroding, eroding, eroding. And it's Winnebago County Salt. Uh, our commissioner is the one that gave the okay and said it's just fine. I don't know who else you're going to blame it on. You can blame it on the city of Boschkosh and their lift station or whatever out there. That's because you tell people drive on our city roads. Well, place. we have to get there. Like, we, like we do on the way to Poissippi. Yeah, so, we haven't gotten around a toll in the town road yet. But, sure but, that's under but I mean, that's uh, that's <laughs> bad. That's There's no way. Um, I don't know. We've talked and talked about this ever since I've been on here before. I know that there's something that should have been done out there years ago and it wasn't done. And I don't know. I know it's going to cost a lot of money to go ahead and it's got to be tiled or whatever, but we're talking seven, ten million dollars now for a project we just get or looking at. We had a spire mode by a hot bomb right there. And I we traveled that road a lot. Ever since I can remember, that was a school bowl. I mean, that was a water bowl. Right there, where it ran to, I have no idea. Now it bubbled right up. Go by, so I've seen the bubble come up and say, put that in the station or whatever it is there. And has anybody discussed that with the town of Oklahoma? No. I was going to about the town of Oklahoma. Well, the town of Oklahoma and the sanitary district are two separate. And I mean, we have discussions with the um, with the sanitary district, I mean, he's got video footage of the water prior to the construction of the project. Um, I mean, we want to talk to Marianne about pursuing this legally. Just don't. what your options are. It's been so long. I guess that if that's the option you want to go, I guess we bring this up all the time about talking to Marianne, but she's here, so I told her to sit down. While she's sitting right there, so she hears the whole. Could we talk to the sanitary district about splitting the cost? I mean, we can again, but I mean, their their thoughts that they have nothing to do with us. There's no issues. Oh, oh there's proof that they do. Oh, well, their proof is is that they took videos pr prior to the uh, construction of the project, and there was existing water there. And I so, think one thing that uh, Dr. the chairman, you talked before already. Oh, you're the one serving the products. Yeah. If I might, Bob, um, I think we've identified the problem. I'm looking for the solution. What's your recommendation? I mean, I don't think there's the, the study that came out. There is no solution. Hey, go out there, do this. It's going to fix it. Okay. Um, I know the landowner said drain tile is guaranteed it's going to work. I mean, I, I think know. I said, so yes. one thing is, is same. You know, we have water issues here. We have them in other areas too. Yeah. Same situation, um, you know, with these. So, um, you know, I mean, I, I'd be, feel more comfortable if somebody could go in there and, you know, mathematically say, hey, yes, this, this will address the issue. But just to go in there and spend, I mean, could put storm sewer. You just heard how much storm sewer went up. Oh, yeah. Um, 
you know, I mean, I think I suggest a tile line, but uh, maybe yeah. you know, are you thinking we should have a, a study done or something or a professional and determine whether that would actually work before we spend the money? I mean, I would. I mean, we spend the money to put a drain tile in it. What if it doesn't work? Right? That's why. Not what we're doing. Whose fault is it that's county road E? Is that the county's problem? This well, within the right of way, is what you're asking. Right. Hey. Hey. I mean, why are the ditches there at all? That's right. Why? So we take so the water, it. the ditches are there to take the water from the roadway to clear it away from the roadway, so it's, it saves the roadway base. So it's doing its work. It's doing the ditches functioning as it should. It's, that's all leading underneath that roadway, and that's gradually going to eat that up. We all know water sits down roadways, and if this deteriorates underneath sooner or later. You mean the money? I'll, well, so I guess that's what it's going to come down to. Is this? I mean, I just don't. I don't know if the storm, if the drain tile is fixed. My personal opinion. Did we not go out there and take elevations to see if there was enough drop that we can take care of it? I mean, it is ditched to the, what we can. With there's really nothing we can ditch anymore. It's so Winnebago County is very flat. <laughs> Um, I mean, Winnebago County is very flat, no matter where you go in these areas where it's flat, um, you know, there's not a lot you can do. You, know, you can keep lowering ditches, lowering, lowering culverts, but if you don't have an outfall, um, we just don't have an outfall in county property. I mean, if we, we're, gonna, we're probably going to have to want private property for that. Again, I don't know if anybody ever talked to Dan Ziegenhagen. He's got a perfect waterway right down right underneath there and all right away from there. Right. But you have a 21 project that's going to come up with a four legged roundabout. Where is that going to be? 21 is just coming up. I've talked about this one. Hmm. Right. 21 well, I'm just looking at the future. I mean, all this plays together. It all ties together in the future. We're not going to, you know, go out and look at purchasing additional right away for that. And I guess I'd like to look out for the Ford future too. Is there any chance, like I heard the gentleman's conversation earlier, that we seem like they kind of know that they're not going to be entitled really immediately, but it just seemed like it. if we went out and cut more. So he cuts the lawn to a certain point, but then later, so we can get that. And if we went more often, I didn't know that. that's so it's like a short temporary fix right now. I don't. Well, I mean, one thing is, I mean, the more more we cut it, the more debris you have in the ditch. So then we have to go out there and excavate that out. So there's, I mean, the give and take with we done that later. Right? To excavate, I mean, we yeah. we did a part from Nobles. We did that all a couple hundred feet, maybe. I think from yeah. Nobles, I believe. So I just look for a temporary just tell them back and forth until we find somebody, but it maybe took something. I'm not sure it was off ended up with it. Yeah, I mean Well, I'm thinking of, if I'm honest, the best thing to do is pursue a, putting a tile line in there. And, you know, tile lines run a long time. There's lots of years. So, what do you get, 20 years, maybe? And that's four inches, you start running eight inch. Yeah, it runs a long time before we fill up. So, uh, so put so, a drain tile in? Yes, and yeah. they, they determine whether or not uh, that can be done. You want both sides of the road then? I'm on top of one side, right? Well, both sides. Both sides? Both sides. Both sides. Both sides. Who can you get a hold of to see if that'll work? Well, you can yeah, shoot grade. Yeah. If you know you got grade, a tile runs down to what, quarter inch, a foot, drop, or eighth inch? Yeah. So you can put it. Not level, but just. Well, I think Ronnie Miller said about just putting it in and that storing the water. Yeah, is what he said. 
So I like I said I'm taking his word for it. So okay. I mean if it works, that might be the easiest solution. No one else got to tear the ditch all up, take it deeper. And... Although you're gonna to have to keep the herbicide going because you don't want weeds growing in your tile. Operations. Pardon me. It's a operations. Okay. Um, just a couple things with uh, the warmer weather. We're gonna we're starting to remove our wings off the trucks. Um, there's no frost in the ground, so we're getting those removed off our trucks right now. Yeah. Um, so. And then another thing coming up too, we have uh, our County Road I project um, from Ripple into the city of Oshkosh. Um, April 6th, we'll, we're having our uh, public informational meeting at Whitman Airport. Um, so we just scheduled that last week. Yeah, last week. Um, so letters were sent out. So homeowners should be getting those um, uh, probably the middle of this week. So to discuss that, that'll be an informational meeting. The first first informational meeting for that um, for that project. Um, um, I know the radio has been to discussion uh, with that. Um, I don't know where that falls. It said it's on the next meeting tomorrow night. Um, so, um, you know, one thing for our department, I mean, I think I brought up before is, is that the, the two, the portable radios we have, um, they're just so hard to hear in the trucks. So we'd like to move forward and move into the hard mounted uh, radios. Um, so I, mean, I think we kind of been through everything with how important that is to our department, communicating with the sheriff's department. Um, the, the one other thing, I mean, to look at is, is if if the highway doesn't go along with this, I mean, we're, we're going to start looking at, I guess, you know, who is going to, from each department, I'm, I'm assuming every department's going to have to have somebody that's going to take over that communications part of that. Um, you know, it's another, it's something to look at with this project. I mean, the Sheriff's Department has done a fantastic job with uh, administrating the radios. Um, so... Just a couple things to think about with that. Um, you can elaborate on that, before you go any further, though. You said now that you wanted the truck mounted. Well, if you listen to the sheriff's department, they're not talking about the trucks mounted, and your guys are going to be left out in the cold because I can tell you that so the resolutions come in to cut that. Sure as heck. You know, it's they'll probably give us the sheriff's, which yep. deserves it. But if you guys don't come in and say, well, we need it for this or that, and they're thinking, well, you're just going to get hand mounted. It's going to come in and say, well, you can just take the hand mounted ones and use them until the 10 years is up or it's not working any good or whatever. So if you don't make a strong voice opinion tomorrow night or whatever, that's what's going to happen. You can cut right out of there. I have a, that's my feeling, just listening are, to different are, ways. Are you going to the meeting? Yeah. yeah I don't, if, if they make a motion to cut our truck radios, I'll, I'll ask for your opinion. How's that? I mean, I would ask that the, our highway committee offer some support too. Um, oh, I guess yeah. last, you know, last meeting, I thought I would have heard something from our highway from our highway committee. I didn't get any support from our highway committee at that time. Um, I guess which leads me to believe the minds are made up and uh, things are evolving. Well, I know, but yeah, you might I guess be aware it, of. from my point of view, yeah. I hear other committees getting their support and you know to not get the support from my own committee i guess are you know a little well, disheartening that's so, why i called you when i said you better get there because yeah. they're all looking at these hand mounted and people are going to think that you need them right and until i heard from you saying well we don't care about the hand mounted we want all the radio mounted that's what we need and how much more money are they going to cost us versus the other ones you know, that's all just thrown in one package. That's what they're looking at. I mean, the cost part of it, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I guess I can find out. For our, yeah. okay. I think we should have all of that. 
but the you know, so safety I, so, aspect too big is an important thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, every truck, you don't see any truck or any car going down with a radio driving all the radio. They all have, I mean, they're hard mounted. You grab your mic. That's what I do in the bus. Right. right. I don't fumble around with that. Tell them about that safety. If you had told me what happens if they get caught three times with one in their hands or whatever. Or a phone. Yeah. Phone. Tell them what happens to I me. Mean, some of these probably don't even know it. I didn't know it at that time. Right. What happens? You lose your CDL. There's three violations of that's automatic loss of CDL. So our commercial driver's license, I mean, you have to be hand-free. There's no there's no getting around that. I mean, the state and federal laws, um, you know, I, I just, to ask our drivers to violate laws like that, that puts them in harm's way and harms other people, um, you know, that's that, that's my thought. With it. I don't think you have to worry about that. No, I don't, I don't think you just got to make that clear. The issue I don't think is with this department. There's other issues with other departments, whether they need that level of a rating. Well, they there was specifically aimed at highway things. I agree. It was directed directly at highway. Yeah, yeah. I think we we don't play that. I mean, I it just one thing. I mean, to get quotes from Baycom is very tough. By tomorrow night at six o'clock, I'm just—I'll do my best to try to get some quotes for the radios. I—I I I can't promise that I'm gonna. It's a tall order. To well, doesn't the or the sheriff's department call? Well, yeah, yeah, it's not up to you to get. Well, I don't know what they have for. I mean, their quotes, yeah, but I mean, on. a separate quote for our department at all. No. I, I think. Yeah. Has okay. her finger on the pulse regarding a call with the numbers. Yeah. And if you call her, she can hit you. That's not. Yeah. One of the other things, though, is I got the parks department. Did you hear their quote? They prefer to use cell phones. Yeah, I think it's in a minute. So. So are they going to provide cell phones to all employees then? I have no idea, but they got CDL licenses running around in right. those trucks. So we get, you know, you're getting a contradiction, which opens more discussion. Which right. You know, you want to get into yep. that kind of stuff. So, I mean, using the cell phones, I mean, you just, you know, you're forced to get out of the vehicle. You're out in the lane of traffic. So you got to put a left wing down or... To get out the way of traffic, I mean, that's just one of those another safety part of it. That oh, I don't think just, they should be either them all on the drive the truck. Oh, right, no oh, way, yeah. Oh, no, I don't think right. that's the wrong. Okay, that's the I have a, a under general operation at point. Uh, I gotta tell you a little story, and uh, of course, we've approved by committee action the uh, lighted. Directional sign at GG and Green Valley Road. So I bring this up at the town board meeting. I report to the town of Benham last Monday. And um, count, uh, town supervisor Devons said he met with Mike and they did a study out there and they determined uh, they're just going to put up directional signs. Do you have any comment on that? We were under direction from the town what to put in there. So that was directed from the town. Say that again in slow motion. I'm not quite keeping up with you there. The, the town of Vinland directed us what to what they wanted installed there. Does that include a lit sign? That's going to be have to be additional to after what they want installed there. Well, I mean, what do you know? They change their mind and they should have a pay for that list sign. That's and they are well, they're paying for all the installation, all the new signs, yeah. everything that's going in there. They're paying for it because it's their role. I'll pay for this sign. I think we pay for signs better. Well, that's not what we approved. 
Well, I know. That. I know, but I, I would agree that the town of Vinland now intervening with their disposition, which was totally unknown to me, <clears throat> does change the situation. Right. I mean, we can tell them they can't put it on their town rule. I mean, I, that's my thought. It's, it's just like, I don't want to tell them what they can and can't do on their own jurisdiction role. No, but uh, give you a little history. Uh, the person raising the concerns is, is uh, uh, no, what's her name? The lady that owns a horse ranch. Pardon her. me? Run Sherry. Run yes. And she took it to town of Billen and they said they couldn't do nothing and wouldn't do nothing. That's been probably six, eight months ago. So now all of a sudden, We've got a town supervisor, I'm not sure that's a board opinion, but certainly his opinion, meeting with the county superintendent that takes care of the town bill, coming up with a new concept of what signage should go in there. So where does that put up? Huh? I mean, really, that, that's just... Uh, all he did is threw everything under the bus. And play. Yeah, sure, he made the phone call. Well, <laughs> I mean, like I said, I mean, the, it'd be different if it was, I mean, and I know we're going to differ on this, that you say it's county property, but it's no different than I-41, State Highway 47. Yeah, I understand. But well, now, if the town of Billman, by town board approval, is saying no, that's our jurisdiction. We're going to do the signs. I wish the hell they'd let me know. I don't know what we've got an issue here. So right, but one thing is, though, is like I said, is I sure do not want to. I mean, I can get a hold of uh, Mr. Devins and find out. But like I said, I really don't think it's our position to tell them what they should do on their. Oh no. No, no, so I, I their totally choice, agree. To install, then... And I totally agree. I mean, uh, this com this committee has rendered its disposition, but if the town of Binnen board wants to go a different direction, then I think we need to probably revisit the whole thing. Cool. Right? You agree? Yeah. Hey, uh, next month, I'd like to have put on the board this committee to go in and to give some kind of approval or at least bring it to the board where we have approval up to so much money so that these guys can get their trucks that become available and after that it's not on the agenda so it can't be left at the meeting i'd like to have if bob can take us out there or whoever look at some of them trucks out there i mean i went after that meeting there and they're showing some of these you can put your hand right between there some of these trucks are going to just fall right off and then it's reliable Sure, we have insurance, but when we only want to go around and say the trucks follow right off the thing, um, some of them don't have clearance lights on. It was it just awful. I couldn't believe that some of the trucks well, that there are. Some right. of that stuff, clearance lights, that's a big thing. So, well, right. some right. of this, I mean, that's letting it go down the hill. We should just go out and just look at that. Like I said, it's not on the agenda, so it'd have to just be as we go out there and walk around. But uh, I would appreciate it if Bob would take us out there and look at Show us around of these trucks and that now right after this meeting because I just couldn't believe it that day that how bad like you could almost stick your hand right straight through for some of them or some of them slide off you can see where they redid that one whole box box and, and redo the whole thing it's all welded in there you can still see like little holes in that in there so could you prep the board on that tomorrow well I don't think in your report well I could that way sure I could prep the board I could give it in my board that way I couldn't say on the highway, but I think here again, between as a committee, not on and as a board, as a committee go out there, but we go out as individuals go out there and Bob take us and look around at these so we all know what we're actually looking at. So I think it's very well worthwhile, but I also really think that if there's trucks that come up available, there's somehow that we should be able to get money so they can go ahead and get these trucks. Yep. So all of a sudden, Bob said, Well, there was one out there, but at the time I got approved for the money, it was gone. So you're talking about a contingency. A contingency. Is there a way we can do that, Maria? I mean, if anything is, you know, 15000 or more, you have to go to personnel and finance. But I can certainly, I have never heard of anything like putting separate contingency. 
certainly is given to Paul Kaiser and finance to see if that's possible. How so much money do we have in your reserve account? Your department's got a reserve account? I'm not sure right off. That's the problem, Mary. And by the time they, they hear they got a truck and they go ahead and get it, that truck's gone by that night or the next day, yeah. and you don't get a chance at it. If we had, uh, let's say we got two or three million reserves in this department, right? Hypothetically, is there a way we could take money out of that already approved budget? Because the reserve is, is budgets, right? right? So could we take money from reserve in a purchase a truck? Yeah, finance. I want to verify that. Not going to just talk about the answer. But could check and see if PMS can approve pre approvals for a truck, specifically for a truck. First, you have to see how much is in your reserve. Yeah. First, that's the first step. So, otherwise, you'd have the yeah. money you set aside in your budget. Yeah. And I don't know, and is there any money right now set aside in the budget for this? Your budget for trucks? Not even we spent it. But I mean, one thing, what's happened is, is in the past that. You know, we ordered three trucks, and uh, uh, the vendor came back and just said, "We're we're canceling the order." They were retooling. It was from uh, Western Star. They, the manufacturer just comes said we're canceling all orders. So we waited on a waiting list for a year and a half for the truck, and they canceled all orders. So then we lost our line in purchasing. Okay. But then later they came by and said, "Hey." Uh, we got a truck that just came available. If you want it, right. you have to let us know when the end of the work is there. So you had money so, in your budget prior to here, is that right? And therefore, when it, when it did become available, that money was gone because it went back into the yeah. general. We're waiting like two, three years for yeah. trucks right now. So we're purchased. So some of the trucks that we purchased are from two years ago. So. So in theory, that money could have gone into quote contingency fund pending the availability of the truck. Again, I don't know the finances you can do that. Yeah, this is just theory. But yeah. these are, and I can certainly put it out there. You know, ask Director Kaiser, figure that out. Because, uh, but I will not just say I will do it after tomorrow because I know they have a very good I mean, same thing with Ford. Ford this year came by and they said, we'll give you one vehicle. So you don't know if it's going to be a 150, 250, 350, 450. We'll give you one vehicle. We don't, we don't even know what, what we're going to get. So, but potentially they could come and say, hey, we're going to open this up and offer more vehicles. But, but right now, that's what we were, what were our quote is one vehicle. So do you have any money right now in your budget assigned to trucks? Yes. Right now, you do. Yes, we have a order, but I mean, that's it may not come to fruition. Right, I think they're out there all a year, a year at least. So we purchased them this year, but we won't see them until oh. uh, they fall in twenty four. And you still need more trucks. Because well, you get these trucks, more trucks. About a dozen. About a dozen. A dozen. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, I mean, we have so we just we did receive one, and it is getting it's down in Madison getting the things put on it right now. Okay. So we will get that. We'll be coming back up to put the box and bring us the flower equipment on. Yeah. Um, but what about the other two? It, well, if it those are on order, I'm one full for like a quarter. We'll get those next year. But then again, somebody might call you once from someplace else and say, "We right. got one if you're interested." Correct. Have you already paid for those other two trucks? Well, we don't think we we issue a PO, but they're not paid for. You signed a contract to purchase, right? Right. So the money is contractually obligated. But just like we talked about, yeah. though, the contracts we get, 
they're saying, oh yeah, by the way, here's a ten thousand six hundred dollar surcharge. Yeah, that's you either you, know, you either pay it or you don't get your vehicle. So, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, yeah, and those two you have to pay for. Well, I think once we we did issue the PO, so once the truck came, we we released the PO, right? Yep. Yeah. So once the other two, we had if the money was there. Well, now, we need to use that money. Okay. All the situations are really good. Yeah, I don't know. We can do that. I mean, I, I agree with Mary Ann. Let's do some fall. We're talking fall on it. Because you've got to be able to get some wood in this now. This is now. They got thousands of dollars more than you can't put it out or going without. So many people. I'd like to put on the agenda for all possible, Mr. Chairman. April 17th. 17th. Move to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Um, that resolution that changed the line.